This is Mark Lee Dixon. Last month, he went to the Supreme Court to cheer on the latest challenge to Roe v. Wade. All right. Dixon's a pastor from East Texas, and for the last few years, he's been on a mission to wipe out abortion one city at a time. The chatter that I'm hearing uh, among people is that, you know, Roe v. Wade is not going to be here much longer. These days, he lives on the road, hopping from one small town to the next. What are sanctuary cities for the unborn? Sanctuary cities for the unborn are cities that have passed ordinances outlawing abortion within their city limits. Dixon helped create the first quote-unquote sanctuary city in 2019 in the tiny town of Wascom, Texas, population 2100. Since then, he's helped to do it almost four dozen times, all over Texas and branching into Ohio and Nebraska. Most of the time, these places don't even have an abortion clinic, so the measure is largely symbolic for now. His playbook's always the same. He starts with a group of like-minded volunteers, gives them the language for a proposed ordinance, and coaches them on how to get it through their city council. His latest project is Abilene. So going in this morning, kind of what's the instruction as when we present this to the city secretary? Will I be the spokesman or whatever? Yeah, so how, how do we do this? I'm not an Abilene resident. I'm just here to support you guys. The Abilene measure, like all the others, outlaws abortion in the city and allows private citizens to sue anyone who helps someone get an abortion. Dixon and a group called Project Destiny have been trying to get this ordinance through the Abilene City Council for years. Abilene, we didn't didn't get there in 2019. We didn't get there in 2020 when it went back before the council in January. We're gonna have to do it by the voice of the people because the leadership just not listening. Hopefully, uh, we'll see. We'll see this pass. Can we just pray, you guys, and yeah. uh, then we'll head to City Hall. Lord, we want to see Abilene uh, pass this ordinance. We want the blessing of God on our city. And what greater way to do that than to see this uh, see our city protected from abortionists in Jesus' name? Amen. 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 All right, so let's head to City Hall, guys. It'll take about five minutes to get there. Pretty close. So see y'all there. Many of these ordinances have faced legal challenges, but they've so far largely been dismissed over jurisdictional issues or dropped because the language was rewritten to satisfy a judge. But some local officials, like Abilene City Attorney Stanley Smith, are worried the ordinance is unconstitutional. The majority, if not all, of the model ordinance that I've seen, uh, I think has a strong possibility of being struck down in a court of law. So Dixon and his crew are trying a different route bypassing the council and putting this issue directly to voters. To get it on the ballot this spring, they first have to file paperwork with the city and then collect thousands of signatures. So uh, we'll be going to City Hall, and City Hall is where we have to have to turn in the petitions for the initiative. This is literally the starting the process. In the comic books, Uh, The way that the Justice League was formed was when Starro the Conqueror was uh, ravaging the city. uh, It was whoever was there uh, to fight Starro that became the Justice League. So So you guys are like the Justice League of banning abortions? They're the Justice League of of Abilene, so, uh, (laughs) of banning abortions, so. Since the process is so local, Dixon's experience in each city can be very different. Some are smooth and some are messy. Amen. Amen. Up we go. Up, up, and away. Up, up, and away. We are here as an initiating committee to officially file the ordinance, uh, Sanctuary City for the Unborn Ordinance. Let me go get the city. Okay. This is why we're here. Because had, you know, they just left, oh, we can't do it, you know, well, someone has to push back. Do you run into a lot of confusion when you try to get these ordinances passed? I run into confusion in every city government. <laughs> I mean, there's, it's it's people. Yes, sir. Stanley, Stanley Smith, good to see you. Stanley. Okay, yeah, if you want to present to that to the city, I'll take it and we'll process it the way the charter yeah. requires. So, is there anything else you need from us here? Uh, I'm just taking what you're providing. We, we just need to know because we're going to begin collecting signatures because we have a short window. And uh, all I can tell you is, the charter sets out the procedure to do an initiative in the city of Abilene. Do you want to withdraw the filing of this? Okay, no, I'll, I'll, 
we want to know what we have to do to start so the process. Do you, of getting actually, do you want to withdraw the filing of this? I'm not going to answer that right at this point. Okay, so do you want to withdraw the filing of this? We aren't going to file it this morning. Okay. We'll go back. We'll All right. regroup. Good enough. Thank that, you for that's, your help. That, that's so we're question. just trying to get clarity. So we. I understand. I understand. With a lot of confusion over what exactly needed to be filed, the group headed back to review their steps and try again. We caught him in the pants. He didn't see it coming. And this is the guy that has scoffed at this whole ordinance from, from day one. And I mean, he, he literally, I mean, he has that counsel by the, by the balls. So no way of saying it. Otherwise, I mean, it's truth. Dixon's not a lawyer or a constitutional scholar. He's not a parent. He has no personal experience with abortion. In fact, he says he's still a virgin. But he's become one of the most influential anti-abortion voices in the U.S. This is a heartbeat of a child at eight weeks that was saved from abortion. How did this work start? How did you come to this mission? Well, it, it all started when we found out that an abortion facility in Shreveport, Louisiana, at one time was looking at crossing the border to a place called Wascom, Texas. And so I approached the mayor of Wascom, Texas with my concerns. And he said, well, what do we need to do? And it just kind of rolled off my tongue. I said, you need to pass an ordinance outlawing abortion within the city limits. And he said, expedite me that ordinance. I was sitting up at a back row, uh, back seat of a Chick-fil-A and, and I was just eating some waffle fries and chicken sandwich and, and just um, looking at this ordinance. I didn't want them to get sued into oblivion. So ended up texting my senator, Senator Brian Hughes. And he said, uh, I'd like to introduce you to someone. His name's Jonathan F. Mitchell. Mitchell is a former Texas Solicitor General and once clerked for Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia. Jonathan Mitchell said, I can't believe no one has ever thought of this before. It's a brilliant idea. He said he knew of a way to help it survive a legal challenge. What Mitchell did in the Wascom Ordinance was introduce the idea that private citizens could enforce this, saying they could sue anyone who aided or abetted an abortion and win at least $10,000. That's the same language Mitchell then used when he drafted SB 8, the Texas Heartbeat Bill, which he argued before the U.S. Supreme Court in November. The problem is the private individuals aren't doing any of those things that the state has been enjoined from doing. They're doing something entirely different. They're the ones who are filing the lawsuits. You've been called, quote, the architect behind bringing this terrifying vigilante law across Texas. Are you a vigilante? I'm not Batman. I'm not a vigilante. I am someone who is seeking to, to encourage cities to stand up for what they believe is, is right. Is this effectively a loophole to get around the laws that are in place? I don't see it as a loophole. So we're complying with Supreme Court rulings. Even though we believe that the Supreme Court rulings on abortion are wrong. When Wascom outlawed abortion, did I realize that it would lead to the Texas Heartbeat Act? No, I didn't. This wasn't some kind of orchestrated plan. But it's now being used as a kind of template for a coordinated attack. At least five states have introduced legislation that uses the same language as the Texas bill. The U.S. Supreme Court decided in December that SB 8 can remain in effect while it works its way through lower court challenges. For Abilene Mayor Anthony Williams, these aren't decisions his city should even be involved in. Abilene, like most of West Texas, is a, a pro-life community. I think the difference has been, what is the role of a city? Do you think it's fair to say that this push to ban abortions represents the will of the people of Abilene? I'd say the, the ordinance uh, represents a very passionate issue of some in this community. 
I am pro-life. I just disagree with the, the mindset and, and the end of this approach. I believe it's not the appropriate way for the local government to engage in what I think is appropriate at the federal and state level. We are charged with the potholes and water and solid waste and police and, and fire. I wanna be sure um, when our citizen goes to the faucet and turns on the valve, that water comes out. After another trip to City Hall, Dixon and his team successfully filed their paperwork and started on the next phase. So this is a map of the city, and we follow precinct boundaries. So this will be one of the precincts we're walking tomorrow. Mike Stevens is a political consultant from Lubbock, Texas. In 2020, Lubbock City Council voted down an abortion ban ordinance. So Dixon and co. came up with the workaround to push it forward as a ballot initiative. It was the first time one of Dixon's bans had passed in a town that actually had an abortion clinic. And the ordinance is currently being challenged by the ACLU. Stevens was the guy who got the votes in Lubbock. Now he's running the same play in Abilene. You know, we have surveyed abortion throughout the state of Texas for years. And with the common voter, they actually would, would keep in place pro-choice. But with the people at large, it's very much behind the eight ball. You know, it would pass at 60 to 70 percent all the time if all of those people voted city by city. So you're saying there's a large portion of voter, of people who are not voting who support these ordinances? So there's a large portion of pro-life folks that don't vote on other efforts. We know now from Lubbock that it really doesn't matter that they weren't a voter in the past. This one will get them. This, this will get them will, out to the polls. This will get them out to vote. So once again, when you're going door to door, hi, I'm Mike with Project Destiny. I'm a volunteer working to bring about an abortion-free avenue. Would you like to start sign our petition? So we're following Tammy. She's one of the volunteers this morning who's driving out to a precinct to gather signatures to get this abortion ban on the ballot. All right, they're friendly people. Everyone in Abilene is pretty much friendly. Hi there. My name is Tammy and I'm with Project Destiny and we're just walking around allowing people the opportunity to sign our petition to help protect the unborn in Abilene. Wait, 1174? No, 1374. Oh, 1374. All right. Nobody home. I don't know that I'm going to sign this. That's I'm okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. We'll go all the way then here and then turn around. And okay. So, um, real quick question though. Should I have said this is actually not about politics, it's about the unborn or is that too hostile? If they, if they say that, just say, yeah, well, this is not po about politics. This is about... Protecting the right to life. And then just leave it at that. What are these conversations like at the door? Um, most people are interested as soon as we talk about protecting the unborn in Abilene. And then as soon as we bring up abortion, then they, the ones who are not um, willing to participate or sign the petition pretty much shut us down there. What do you think is happening? Well, I think... There's a struggle for most people. There's a lot of people here in the city that want to protect the unborn, but they also want to protect women. And so I feel like it's kind of, you have to choose between one or the other. How do you reconcile those? So to me, it starts from birth, from, from conception to the grave. And if you don't value all those lives, then where does the line go? Dixon and his team plan to turn in the signatures as soon as they can and are aiming to get the initiative on the ballot in the next available election. Why do you care about this so much? Well, I believe that life is valuable. And I believe that abortion at its root is the throwing away of a human life. I view the unborn child as just as human as the born child. Uh, and the mother. Yeah, the mother's not more human than the unborn child. They are equally human. And since they're equally human, We've got to make sure that we are treating them on the same level. Right now, we're talking about a legal right that is, whether you agree with it or not, protected by a current Supreme Court decision. Do you think this is the role of a city? Is this overreach? Well, I believe cities make decisions all the time based on the, the health and welfare of their residents. If an abortion facility moved into Abilene, Texas. It's not Austin, Texas problem. It's not Washington, D.C.'s problem. It's Abilene's problem. Is the plan 
to go to every city that might be amenable and try to get one of these ordinances passed? No, it's not my plan. Ultimately, cities need to do what they want to do. I would love to see abortion outlawed on every, every square inch of America. But I understand that there are some cities out there that maybe they want to be a sanctuary city for abortion. If that's what they want, at the end of the day, if that's what the people in that community want, then that's, that's how this process works. Thank you. Alrighty. This is the legendary chicken yes. fried steak. So this is one of the, in my opinion, one of the best chicken fried steaks in the state of Texas. This is like the highlight of your trip. I'm, pre I'm pretty excited about this, so. <laughs> so you're on the road a lot. I am. What is that like, like in a given month, how much are you traveling? Ooh, almost every day. Yeah, I'm, I, almost every day I'm, I'm in a, a hotel room uh, in some other city. Uh, I may be in one city for a week, I may be in a city for two or three days. It, it just, it's always different. What's that like for you? To be honest, it gets, um, it's tough at times. Uh, just like anyone else, I struggle with, with this world that we live in. Uh, it, it gets depressing. Uh, but I know that I'm where I need to be, that there's work to be done, and, and I believe that you know, we've got to see that work through. How long are you going to do this for? Uh, I don't see myself doing this forever. And in, in fact, I, I would love to, to get to that point where I hang up the cap, you know, that I end up uh, doing something else. But for as long as this is what I feel like God is, is leading me to do, then, then that's, that's what I'm gonna do.